Murph Dog Training here to throw you guys yet another bone on some health and fitness advice. Today we're gonna to get into a lot regarding protein, okay? And the type of foods or supplements you're taking and how they will react and digest into your body. So let's get right off to it. All right, first things first, um, low protein diet, and we've talked about this before, good for absolutely nothing, okay? You're not gonna get anywhere keeping your protein low. The ability to build and repair muscle tissue is going to get to a standstill and it's not going to work out for you. So if you guys are working out, you need to make sure you're getting adequate amounts of protein. What does that mean? That means if you're missing meals and not meeting your protein needs, your results are going to be affected dramatically. Okay, you're just not going to get where you're trying to get to. Um, if you are exercising, your body's going to require quite a bit more protein than somebody who's not exercising. Because when you work out, you're lifting weights, your body's breaking down that muscle tissue, and it needs amino acids and protein to repair, recover, and stimulate growth. So you guys are getting the results that you're trying to achieve. Okay, so if you are lifting weights, okay, you're trying to gain muscle, you want to be getting a good one gram per pound of body weight if you have a lot of muscle and you're a bodybuilder. And if you're trying to lose weight, you're dieting to lose fat, you want to increase that quite a bit, okay? You want to then go to 1.2 to 1.5 grams. Um, you don't want to get too much, because if you're getting too much, then you're going to convert that protein to glucose, and you might as well save that and just either eat some carbs, that way you're getting a little more satisfied and you're not just wasting your money buying needless protein. Um, the reason you want to increase that is because when you're in a calorie deficit, your body's, gonna, your body's first response is going to be to attack the muscle because you don't really need that and it's going into starvation mode. So to prevent that, you need to increase your protein. That way you're getting even more amino acids and you're telling your body to hold on to that muscle and to take away from fat. Okay, so how do we get this? Okay, how are we getting all the protein? Um, best, best source is going to be food, but I live in the real world, and even with my crazy schedule and dedication, dedication to this, I need some supplements. And you want to know what you're putting into your body with your food, even when it's whole food, and when it is your supplements. Not all protein is going to get digested equally. It metabolizes differently, and your body will use some proteins more efficiently than others. Okay, the best protein you're going to want to use is something easily digested that contains plenty of amino acids. Okay, this is going to be some high quality protein powders and protein coming from meats. Meat's going to be your best and most effective way for building muscle, and it's going to also help increase your testosterone. If you're not sure the type of foods and how they are reacting or how they digest, I highly recommend this, guys. Not a lot of people on their channels are talking about this, but you need to check out the Protein Digestibility Corrective Amino Acid Score, okay? And what this does is it rates all protein, quality of food, a score from zero to one, okay? Zero being the worst, one being the best, okay? So I'm not gonna go into all the different foods and how they um, break down because you can just check out this chart and see what you're eating and how that measures up on the chart. Let's talk about supplements real quick. A lot of people talk about protein powder, and I know guys that are going to the gym, working out, and they buy things with an expensive price tag, and they'll, they'll hear casein, so all they do is buy casein and they stick to that. And um, arguably, casein is um, one of the better protein powders, but I'm gonna tell you why you wanna have a good isolate in your uh, repertoire, okay? Your isolate protein, that's gonna be rapidly absorbed and digested, so, a lot of my clients, um, they, they know how important meal timing is. So your pre-workout meal and your post-workout meal, that's when you want those rapidly digested proteins either coming from food or a little easier um, to put it in your day, supplements. Casein powder, this is a great protein and I would recommend using it either at the beginning of your day if you know you're not gonna be eating for quite a while or using it before bed. That's gonna give you like an IV drip because your body's breaking down that protein very slowly. How do I use these two? One, I don't buy casein. I make a lot of money and I still feel like, um, you know, it's not worth it to me when there's other foods out there. So what I do when I want some slow digesting protein, and this is what I do even in my, my fast digestive protein because I require a lot of protein at this point to not only maintain, but even more so to grow. So when I have my morning shakes, my pre-workout shakes, my post-workout shakes, and let's say um, I'm eating four or five whole foods during the day, and I want to be adding some muscle, I'm going to have to incorporate some more shakes in there as well. So I will incorporate 
the isolate protein, but what I also do is I add in egg whites, okay? I get the pasteurized kind, I don't break open eggs and put it in there because you can get salmonella, this and that. And the reason I'm doing egg whites is because this is a perfect score on that PDCAA chart of one, okay? This is what your body's gonna use most efficient, efficiently, and on top of that, um, it digests very slowly, much more slowly than the casein powder. So I will put in my pre-workout shake, um, my two scoops of isolate get a good 40, 45 grams of protein, and then I'm gonna put another 25 grams of egg whites on top of that to go ahead and continuously be breaking that down and absorbing that through my workout. And I do the same thing after my workout because I normally go to bed after training and I wanna make sure I'm feeding those muscles throughout the night and not having to wake up and eat whole foods and um, you know set alarms and do things that way. So this is a good video, guys. Um, you're not going to find this on a lot of channels out there, and I really think it's going to be beneficial for people who want to take their game to the next level and understand a little more about nutrition. This, in combination with that carbohydrates video and going into the glycemic index scale, are going to be two tools that are going to help you guys get to where you want to be if you can't afford a trainer at this time. Next video is going to be talking about fats, and then after that, I promise to get you guys... Um, the information regarding how I'm working so many hours, still going to the gym, and um, not even feeling it. You know, it's been a 16-hour day for me. Then after that, went to the gym, did my tanning. Now I'm making this video, and I don't even feel it. And if you're eating shit food, you're putting McDonald's, things like that in your system, you're going to be exhausted by the time lunch hits at your normal job, and uh, you're just not going to be able to have the extra energy you need to get things taken care of. So keep in mind, your nutrition is very important. Uh, exponentially so if you're someone who's trying to live a healthier lifestyle, gain some muscle, and lose some fat, and just overall feel better about your day. All right, guys. Hope that helps, and um, I'll see you again next week. Bye.